What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender animation tutorial. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to make a turntable animation where your camera flies around an object inside a Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so what we want to do is we want to set this up where our camera is going to fly around our object instead of our object turning. And the reason for that is because if the object turns, you can see how the lighting on the object is going to change and we don't necessarily want that for this kind of video. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by inserting a camera. We're going to set that up so it animates along a circular path. So I'm going to do a shift A and I'm going to add a camera right here. I'm going to hit the zero key. I'm going to make sure that we've locked our camera to our view. and I'm just going to set this up so that we've got the camera angle that we're looking for. Then I'm going to jump back out of there and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a path for this to follow along. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do a shift A and we want to add a curve. And in this case, we want to add a circle right here. So you don't want to add the mesh circle. You want to add the curve circle right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale that out um, so that it's about where my camera is. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but we're going to scale it out until it's at about that location. And then I'm just going to move it up a little bit. And so what we want to do is now we want to set our camera up so it's going to follow along this path. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to select our camera. Then we're going to do a shift click and we're going to do a control P. What that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to parent our camera to this uh, circle as a path. So what I want to do is I want to click on the option for follow path. Now, if I click the play button, you can see how what this camera is going to do is it's going to fly all the way around this circle one time. And so we can set it so that it goes around more in a minute. But for right now, um, let's make another change. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that this is centered on our object at all times. And so to do that, we're going to add what's known as a tracking constraint. And so what the tracking constraint is going to do is that's going to allow us to make sure that our camera points at this at all times. All right, so we're going to select our camera. And then we're going to go down to this little button right here for object constraint properties. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to add a constraint. And in this case, we want to set an option for track two. And what that's going to do is that's going to set this object so that it tracks to something that we select. Well, in this case, we're going to select track this object, which is my Bonnie model. So now you see how you have this blue line in here. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to track this towards this model at all times. So if I was to go into um, my camera and click on play the animation, you can see how this is going to fly around this model. So a couple other things from there. So you could add an empty in here and track to that instead. And then if you did that, then you could move the empty around to set um, the up down direction. So that's one thing you could do in order to adjust this. So you can also click on your circle right here and under your object data properties, under path animation, you can adjust the number of frames that this turns, right? Because right now this is going in a circle in 100 frames like this. Well, if you wanted to, you could add frames to that animation. So you could set this to 200. And so if you set this to 200, what that's going to do is that's going to set your animation so that it takes 200 frames to go in a full circle instead of 100 frames like this. And so one other thing you could do as well is you could come in here and you could set this up as a shadow catcher. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to just get the shadows that are on this surface without the actual plane itself. So if you wanted to create something with like a transparent background, um, this is how you would do that. And so we're gonna, we're gonna need to switch our rendering engine to cycles instead of to Eevee. And then under our object settings, under visibility, we want to set the option for mask to be shatter. And so what that's going to do is that's going to get this. See how this is no longer showing ground in here. It's just showing you the shadows along the face. And then one other thing you need to do is you need to go up into cycles. And within cycles, you need to go down to your film. And you need to make this transparent like this. And so you can, this is going to give you a completely transparent background when you do this with shadows that are in here. And so one other thing that you might do is you might think about taking this collection and um, saving it. So for example, what I've done is I've taken my plane, right? And I moved it outside of my setup. I don't think it matters because it's parented to my circle, but 
um, if you set this up with all of these objects, um, your planes, your point lights, all those different things as um, inside of a collection like this, and then you save this, well then you could create a new file and you could actually bring that setup in by using the append function. So you could set that up where you wanna go find your blend file. So you wanna go into turntable and then under collections, you can see how I had that turntable set up. Well, I can double click in order to bring that setup in to another video. And so notice how um, it is bringing in my original model right here. So you'd wanna delete that out and then set your camera up so that it's tracking this other object but now I've got a turntable for this other object that all I had to do is just bring it into Blender um, without having to do all of the setup. Alright so I will link to a couple other videos about other kinds of animations you can create inside of Blender but leave a comment below let me know what you thought. As always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.